Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah. If I'm online, just check for me. Um, may God bless you in this wonderful morning. Yeah, we already celebrated um, a Christ feast, uh, but now we're looking at the end of this year. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise God. Seems like I'm on, so praise God for that. I just had to make sure, I'm not sure. <laughs> it says live, but sometimes, you know, it says live, then, you, then you're not really on. I want to greet you this morning in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you this morning that Jesus loves you. And, and uh, this morning is just a word of encouragement. Now we start looking forward to in preparation for this new season, you know, 2023 that's laying ahead. And, and we're looking back at what God has done and what had happened. Pastor Saki, Guiamora, good morning. God bless you. So, yeah, um, I did not put it on earlier what I will preach about uh, because at one stage I didn't thought my time will make it because I had to do some things in the city but yes, then I came back a bit more early, so I decided I, I truly just want to share a word with you this morning. Amen. I really just want to bless you with, I believe, what God wants to say this morning. So yeah, amen. I believe that you had a, an amazing Christ feast. I believe that family and friends come together and honor God, and uh, what a privilege. So let me pray and we start this morning. Amen. Let me pray. Father, I thank you. For the word of God. I thank you for your son Jesus Christ. For your Holy Spirit. I pray Lord that. May the word by itself. Speak in our hearts. and May we experience the fullness. And the grace of God. May we be encouraged Lord. But may we be full. To overflow Lord. Start overflowing in the dimension. That you have called us for. I just want to honor you this morning. I want to glorify you. May you bless this word. Bless the one who hears the word. May the one who hears be transformed into the likeness of Christ. And may the word that he will pond on and, 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 and uh, meditate upon. May the word just touch their hearts. I thank you today. I just thank you Lord for the, that we are busy in preparation. For 2023. May you speak to us Lord. In Jesus Christ mighty name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. If I have not yet greeted you. Selamat siang. If you are in Indonesia. So this morning my message is. What will I choose? What will I choose? And I want to read in two different translations. And we will look at. You know. Uh, Philemon or the book of Philippians. And I want to read there in Philippians chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. Now Paul praying here and he says, My prayers for you are full of praise to God as I give him thanks for you with great joy. I'm so grateful for our union. Do you know what is the sad part? Mora, my ma. Um, what is the sad part? You know, if I just, you see on social media how Christians, you know, act towards one another. And then you just discover, but there's no union. And here Paul says how important. I mean, he finds himself in prison. He's about to die. He is in that situation. But yet, he's full of this thing about the love, the union he has with his fellow brethren. And I really want to encourage you. May we, uh, Pastor Giat, uh, uh, um uh, echo, good morning from Giat. Hello, Salamat Siang. Um, you know, may we in 2023 come in a closer, closer union with each other. You know, the anointing is there where brothers are together. And I really want, and Paul pray in his condition. He's not judging anything. In his condition, he said, I'm so grateful for our union. Verse 5, and our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented the gospel to you. They were not changed because of things that happened. And I, 
You know, the sad part is truly, you know, when you go on social media and you read about. And then I'm asking one thing. Where is the love of Christ? Where is the union? I understand there's people that have different opinions, different perceptions, di different re revelations. But you know what? We are not. We are not born again to shoot each other. We are born again to become to come in unity and to love one another. And I really want to encourage you. And then we go in verse 6. And they say, I pray with great faith for you. My question this morning is for how many people you pray? How many people you can come right now in thanksgiving before God at the end of this year and say, Lord, I thank you for the people that I walked in this year in that union. Hello, my darling wife, Pastor Michelle. Goedemorgen. Good morning. He says, I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this glorious work in your will faithfully continue to the process of maturing you and will put his finishing touches to it until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. I also want to read in the uh, American Standard Version, I think. But let me read. He says in verse 6, For I am confident... Of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus of Christ Jesus. And I want to I say this prophetically over you today. My God, my God, what he has begun in your life, the good, may it, it says here, may it, the work in you will be perfect until the day of Christ Jesus. May that work that God has started in your life. May it become perfect. And the one translation, uh, the, the, the passion, it says, you know, that the process of maturing will, it's like God will put His finishing touches. May 2023 be that finishing touches. May 2023 be the thing that what God has prepared you for. May it be that finishing touching that you can do the will of God according to what is planned for your life. Verse 7. It is no wonder I pray with such confidence, since you have a permanent place in my heart. You have remained partners with me in the wonderful grace of God, even though I'm here in chains for standing up for the truth of the gospel. He says, listen, I've got so much confidence in you. You know, I'm in this bondage. I'm in this prison, prison literally about to die. I mean, he was two years in, in Rome. But, uh, but the thing is, he was there. And yet he says, because I stand up for the truth of God. Amen. Now let's read it in, the, in, in, in this translation. For it is only right for me to feel the way about you all. Because I have you in my heart since both my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of grace with me. You are all partakers of grace with me. And then he goes on, verse 8. Only God knows how much I dearly love you with the tender affection of Jesus Christ anointing. I really believe we will see revival once we can truly love each other. When we can have this union. And you know, Paul is sitting there, people could have judged him, people could have said what? But even in that situation, I mean, they were praying for him. They probably prayed that most, uh, um, most you know, uh, people that would have prayed would have passed the Marius Guillemora, good morning, good morning. Most people would have prayed, God, get Paul out of prison. He can do so much more. You know, why did you send him to prison? Maybe some people, you know, even prayed that. Because when we find ourselves in a difficult situation, we pray about the situation. But Paul teaches us something this morning. And he said, you know, where I am, it's good. Where I am, it's good. But you know what? I want to take the time I still have left to tell you, to be confident in you, that may God, the work that you've started in your life, may God complete that. May that love of God grow in your life. And I'm so thankful for the union, for you standing with me. Amen. Then he goes on, verse 8. 
For God is my witness, how I long for you all with the affliction, or the affliction of Christ Jesus. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment. How do we need love in this time? So that you may approve. So that you may approve. It's only by discovering the true love of Christ that we truly can approve the things. You know, he says, so that you may, you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ. The one translation here says, this will enable you to choose the most excellent way of all. And this morning my message is, what will you choose in 2023? Will you choose to walk in love? Will you choose to walk what God has called you for? doesn't matter what place you will find yourself. Will you keep, will you choose to keep your eyes focused on Jesus? Will you keep to trust Him? He says this will enable you to choose the most excellent way of all, becoming pure and without offense until the unveiling of Christ. Verse 11, and you will be filled completely with the fruits of righteousness that are found in Jesus, the anointed one, bringing great praise and glory to God. Hallelujah. Pastor Rian uh, and Pastor Carissa, good morning. Let's read verse 12. Once again, I will read in two translations. It says, I want you to know, dear ones, what has happened to me has not hindered, but helped my ministry of preaching the gospel, causing it to expand and spread to many people. I want to ask you today, in 2022, this year, what you're going through, did what you actually went through, did you limit what God wanted to do through you? Or can you like, he could see why God brought him there. He could see why he was in that condition. And he says, listen, I want you to know, maybe for you, your perspective is, I'm in prison. I'm only three meals a day. I don't do much. And, you know, maybe I just speak to some people, testify. But he says, I want you to know what has happened to me has not hindered but helped my ministry of preaching. Whatever hindered your ministry in 2022, I want to declare in the mighty name of Jesus that there's a mind shift that needs to come so that within that condition, you should not be hindered to do the things that God has called you for. There should still be growth. Because if you look, you know, um, you know, in, 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 in uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7 and 8, he put his trust, blessed is the man who put his trust in God, and then he says, you will be like a tree planted next to the stream where the roots go through, and when the heat of the sun comes, it will not wither, and then it says, in a time of drought, still he will bear fruit. I mean, this is bearing fruit. Because we look at Paul in prison and we say it equals, you know, a desert. But Paul says, listen guys, even in the desert, hallelujah, I will bear fruit. It doesn't matter where life brings me or God allows me. I have a promise. If I put my trust in God and, you know, I will rely on Him, you know what, wherever I go, you know, whatever I'm going through, I'm telling you, it will not, it will not hinder my ministry, but it will help my ministry of preaching the gospel, causing it to expand and spread to many people. Now, for the people Paul was speaking here and, and thanking them, maybe they could not understand. I'm telling you, there are people outside that look at you and look at your ministry and see the things that, you know, that you went through in this year. And they thought, listen, you know, you know, I, I think you, you got a bad year. But can you today say, you know what, even I went through the valley of the shadow of death. Even I, I had all of these things that happened. One thing I can tell you, it did not hinder the ministry. Why? Because I'm still focused on what God wants me to do. Let's go. I want to read you also verse 12 in, the, in, in this translation. He says, now I want you to know, brethren, 
that my circumstances have turned out for the greater progress of the gospel. I want to tell you that, you know, maybe it happened this year. Maybe things can, you know, take a turn around and you find yourself in dry places in 2023. I want to tell you, let this scripture become and said, God, it doesn't matter where you are, because you said, even in drought, I will bear fruit. Even in drought, my ministry, my ministry will not suffer. My calling will not suffer, because God has anointed me. And if He has brought me into this drought, there's a reason, but rather the ministry will expand in that situation. Amen. Verse 13. In this translation it says, For now the elite Roman guards and government officials overseeing my imprisonment have plainly recognized that I'm here because of my love for the anointed one. Can you imagine that the guards and even the government people see, Listen, Paul, I thought we put you in prison. But we can see that is because of the love though, of the anointed one. I can recognize that in your life. Can people recognize in your time of desert, in a wilderness situation, can people recognize still the love of Christ in your heart? This translation says, So that my imprisonment in the cause of Christ has become well known throughout the whole uh, Praetorian God and to everyone else. And that most of the brethren trusting in the Lord because of my imprisonment have far more Courage to speak the word of God without fear. So I, I want you to quickly understand what he says. You know, uh, there was usually uh, every four hours they would change the God. There were usually in total 16 gods, but close to him he will usually be, be bound by, you know, to a God. And then there were two standing this side of the Lord, two there, etc., etc. So every four hours... There will be a new God that will be chained to Paul. Doesn't matter if you go to the toilet or whatever. So Paul had four hours with every one of these gods, giving them the gospel, sharing. But you must understand who are these gods? Are they just random selected people or just people doing a job? No. They are selected people that, that would serve the emperor for ten years. And, and by serving being a God, and the way you serve, after 10 years you will become a governor of an area or a mayor of a town. So these people become key people after 10 years and will rule on behalf of the emperor a town or a region. And just see what God has brought. You know, Paul being finding himself being imprisoned by these future governors, these future mayors, and he has the opportunity to touch them now, and that he will see the harvest once they finish their 10 years. They, if they become born again, guess what? They will bring that to that town after 10 years or that region, and they will, you know, they will have like grace for the Christians. And Paul says, listen, maybe you think I'm just in prison. But God foresee that I can speak to these future governors, these future mayors. I can give them the gospel, even if I've been robbed of all my freedom. Even if I feel maybe I could have gone to a lot of Gentiles and still bring the gospel. But God has placed me here to put a seed in their lives. So that after a period of time when they become that governor, they become that you know, that, that mayor, that the influence that God through me can have in their lives can make a huge change all over in the Roman Emperor. 2022, maybe you found yourself in, the, in, in dark situations that you've not understand how you find yourself. Did you continue to proclaim the gospel, to proclaim the love of Jesus Christ, even Whatever you went through, could people still see Jesus within your testimony? And that's what happened with Paul. Even amid all of this. Now this translation says, And what I'm going through has actually caused many believers to become, become even more courageous in the Lord 
and to be bold and passionate to preach the word of God, all because of my chains. What will you choose? Paul says, I chose. He says, yeah, you know, all because of my chains, all because of the condition he found himself, he found God's purpose being in that condition to, to, to actually to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 15, um, it says, Some to be sure are preaching Christ even from envy and strife, but some also from good will. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambitions rather than from pure motives, thinking to cause me distress in my imprisonment. Even Paul, you know, found distress by different types of believers. You know, some did it for ambition. Some did it for love. And he said it doesn't matter. Let me go on. You see, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is being proclaimed, and in this I rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. Uh, for I know that this shall turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my earnest expectation and hope, that I shall not be put to shame in anything, but that with all boldness, Christ shall even now, as always, be exalted in body, whether my life or by death. And then we come to this actually famous scripture that um, in verse 21, what Paul, what Paul wrote. In that condition, he says, for, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. But I, uh, if I am to, to, to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor. For me, I do not know which to choose. And then he says, But I am hard pressed from both directions, having the desire to depart and to be with Christ. For that is very much better. Yet to remain on in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. What will you choose? Many people are just waiting for heaven, but for God to live in the flesh, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus, just going to church and hopefully they're okay and they will just make it to heaven. And then there are people living Christ, wherever they are, whatever the situation. And Paul in this said, you know what, I don't mind how long I will be here, but in the flesh I will still labor. But if I die, well... I will be with Christ Jesus. And I want to ask you today, can you make that statement and say, Lord, I choose, as long as I'm in the flesh, doesn't matter what situation I find myself, I will still labor proclaiming the gospel of Christ. I will not moan and groan and get some intercessions and to pray that God will bring me out of my desert or out of my situation that God actually destined for me so that you know, there's something that I, and only I, you know, can do in that maybe calling or, 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 or a situation that God has brought me into. You see, if we have this mindset that we live for Christ, you know, then it doesn't matter. Then it doesn't matter. And Paul says, I don't know what I will choose. For me to live is Christ. I will live Christ. I will continue proclaiming the gospel. And to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. What will I show while I'm in the flesh? Doesn't matter how difficult. Yet, what, you, what I shall choose, I, I don't know. For I'm in a strait between two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your further for the furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoice, rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by coming to you again. I want to conclude. Hetman, good morning my friend, Pastor Hetman Koboka. So nice to see you. We, at the end of 2022, 
how you will look in 2023, whatever, you know, you will face. You know, what Paul teaches us, it doesn't matter where life will bring us. As long as I'm in the flesh, and that's what he says, I will. He says, you know, as long as I'm the, in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. And that is Jesus Christ. Yet, what I choose, I don't know. Because far better for me to go to heaven. But as long as I'm here, and may this be also the motto we have, Pastor Berta, good morning, in 2023. It doesn't matter what we face. Because whatever we face, God allows. But in that, there's a labor that Christ can be glorified. Sophia, good morning, good morning, Pastor Berta, good morning, good morning. What will I choose? And I just want to encourage you. Let's preach Christ. Let's live. While in the flesh, doesn't matter what we face, but let's see the bigger advantage for the gospel. Doesn't matter what situation you find yourself. So that we also can say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. All good, Sophia. And this is just my word this morning. I want to encourage you. What will you choose? Would you choose in 2023 that through the labor and the fruit of your labor, that Christ will be glorified. Doesn't matter where you find yourself. You see, it's far more better than to moan and to worry and to stress and all of these things that actually just steal your joy. Rather be quiet and understand why God has placed you, why God permits or why God allows that. And then in that you will find why God placed you in that situation so that, so that, you know, God can be glorified. We don't know. We don't know. And I really want to encourage you. I really, really want to encourage you. Let's live to the example that Paul lived. And even in that condition, you know, he was not feeling sorry for himself. He saw the advantage of the gospel of Jesus. He was not moaning about his condition. Yet he was still praying for the people that's praying for him. Yet he was praying for the fellowship of the brethren, brethren that he so much missed. But yet even he did not have that anymore. He still said, you know, I miss you guys. I still pray for you. But I want to encourage you. I want to tell you, I know you want me back. I know maybe you think where I find myself, how can it benefit the gospel? But I'm telling you, I've seen how God is working through my chains. I've seen how people got saved. I see how future leaders being changed. And I'm telling you, I'm so excited to see, you know, and to, and to experience the harvest that will come from this. So you guys don't worry. But thank you. Just know one thing. I truly love you. I truly want to be with you. But while I'm here in this chains, I will live. But may there be fruit on my labor. Because if I die, I know I will be in a better place. I will be, Je I will be with Jesus. But yet, if it's not yet my time, let me live a life of victory amidst whatever situation I find myself. And I truly want to encourage you. I truly, truly want to encourage you this morning. You know, start looking at where you find yourself. Start looking where your vision for 2023 and you don't know what road it will take. You, you have an expectation for 2023. You, you have, uh, um, let's say, a mindset. But yet, at the end, God will dictate your steps. He will lead you. And sometimes it will ne not be according to what we've expected. But will you still, the labor, will it still be fruitful? And will you still have the same attitude, the same, the same love for other people? Even you find yourself there, knowing that God has placed you there with a mandate. You just keep on laboring and you will see the harvest, even amidst what other people think. You know, you could have done so much more. So I just want to encourage you today. I want to tell you that God be God. Amen. And uh, yeah, this is just an amazing story. I can just imagine, 
you know, you Paul find himself in the prison and yet through all of this he write to the Philippians and he said, guys, you know, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I don't know what to choose, but it's not for me. While I'm in this flesh, doesn't matter what 2023 holds, while I'm in the flesh, I will labor for Jesus Christ. I will give my all and I will glory Him. I would like to pray for you this morning. Father, I thank you this morning. May we learn from Paul. May we learn that sometimes we do find ourselves imprisoned by some sort of issues. Doesn't matter what we can call them. Sometimes we do not know how we got there. But Lord, let us labor for the kingdom of God. Even where we find, it's like Joseph find himself in Potiphar's house, yet he labored and he find favor. Even in prison, he worked and find favor. Because God, if we come into that rest knowing that you are for us, and whatever you allow, is for the glorification of, of, of the kingdom of God. Let us have the mindset that whether we find ourselves in that or not, we will labor for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Father, I just thank you this morning. May you encourage us. May you open our, our hearts and minds and, and to receive and to know what is God's plan for 2023. May you speak to us, God. May you equip us. May we be prepared to step into this new year with boldness. Doesn't matter. Maybe there's even people finding themselves now in a situation that feels like a prison. Yet, if they look back, there was still fruit, even amidst the difficulties they, they encountered. But I pray, God, that you will strengthen them. May your love abound in them, may it grow in them, may it strengthen them, but may they experience that God, that Jesus Christ is truly the one that we serve Him. And I just honor you right now, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen, amen, hallelujah. May God bless you. Thank you for watching. Uh, start praying for the end of this year. Start Become quiet. Let the Spirit of God prepare you. I want to encourage you. Share this with someone, but just know one thing. Jesus loves you. You're amazing. You know, may God just pour out His love in you so much more. And whatever things in your life, let His love just bring love and understanding and passion. Don't be robbed of the joy of God. God bless you. Amen.